Whether you are new to using Luminar Neo or you've had it for a while, you may have run into some of the most common issues. In a previous video, I broke the code on five of the most common and frustrating Luminar Neo issues that users encounter. I'm Darlene with Digital Photo Mentor, and in this video, we're going to unlock five more. So if you're ready to solve some of your Luminar problems, let's dive in. In this collection of frequently asked questions, the first two are around the develop tool, specifically develop raw. So the first thing we're going to look at is masking on the develop tool. Why is there no masking when I open develop? The answer to that is twofold. There is, however, it only applies after you close develop raw. Let me show you how it works. Here I have a raw image that I've done some basic edits to using develop raw. There's the before and after. Now I'm going to close develop raw is the first tool that I've applied. And I'd like to apply develop a second time and mask it to the background to darken the background even more. However, when I open it again, you'll notice that the tool settings are still here that I've just applied and there's still no masking. There's a trick. All you have to do is apply anything else first. So I'm just going to apply a little bit of structure and mask it just to the flower, like so. Now watch what happens. When I close structure, develop is still here, but notice it doesn't say develop raw anymore. Now when I open it, we have masking. So now I can apply darkness and I'm just going to subtract it from the flower like so. I need to do a little bit of refining on this leaf, but overall it's doing what I wanted, darkening the background. Now, when you close develop the second time and go to your edits tab or history, now you'll see two versions of develop have been applied develop raw first at the bottom of the edits. Your edits go from here up. Then after structure AI was applied, another iteration of develop. So in summary for this one, just remember that develop raw does not have masking and develop does. But in order to access develop and the masking capabilities, you need to apply another tool after develop raw. That leads us to the second frustrating item, which is also around the develop tool. If we open develop, you'll notice there are no camera profiles here. Why don't we have camera profiles on this file? Well, the answer is actually threefold. First of all, we have to go back to develop raw. So back to history and there's the camera profile. The second answer is you must be working on a raw file, which this is. The third part of the answer on this one also depends on the camera that you're using. In my case, I'm using Fuji and I had to custom install these ones. So I got them from the internet, from a Fuji website, and I had to install them manually. So if you use a Fuji camera, you will not see them here. You have to add them. If you use another kind of camera and you don't see the profiles there, let's take a look at an example. I have a Canon CR2 file. So when I pull this menu down under camera profile, down here under external profiles are all the ones for Canon cameras. If you have a camera other than Fuji and your profiles do not show up there, then what you have to do is a small workaround. All you have to do is download a small app called Adobe DNG Converter. I'll put a link to this page in the description below for you. Just pick whether you are Mac, or Windows and download the appropriate one. This is a small app that works in the background as a support file, usually for Adobe programs. However, what it does is it installs the camera profiles on your computer. So once you download and run the installation for this small app, you never have to open it. You do not have to convert your files to DNG. All you have to do is install this program close Luminar, and then when you relaunch Luminar Neo, your camera profiles should appear. You also need to confirm that your camera is supported by both Adobe and Luminar Neo. 
You can find that information here on this page. Just scroll down and find your camera. Anything that is listed here is currently supported. Likewise, if it's supported by Adobe, this program will solve your problem. You'll notice that I'm using a lot of keyboard shortcuts to change modules and move around the program. I do that a lot. If you'd like to get a copy of our free Luminar Neo keyboard shortcuts cheat sheet, that's a tongue twister, there's a link for you in the description area below. Issue number three is how your images look on the screen compared to in print. Have you ever had an experience where you're really happy with an image? You spend a lot of time editing it in Luminar Neo and you're really happy with what you see on the screen. Then you go print it and what you think is going to look like this ends up looking like this in your prints. Or the opposite. Your prints come out either too dark or too light or not the same color at all. The issue at play here is monitor calibration nine times out of 10. So what you need to do is get a device that will help you set your monitor to the correct brightness level and color so that what you see on your screen is going to reproduce accurately when you print it. This is the one I use. It's a small device that you hang in front of your screen. Then you run the associated software that comes with it and it helps you set your monitor correctly. This one is probably overkill for most people. If you want a basic one, this one will suffice. As of the making of this video today at B&H, you can see that it is on sale for $99 with a holiday saving of $20. This is an added expense that you may not have expected, but if you want your print and anything that you export and share elsewhere to look correct, this is a step that you need to take. It will also help with consistency from laptop to desktop to phone and viewing your images online. Before I continue with the last two issues, let me just take a little sidebar and tell you about something special. If you want more complete and in-depth Luminar learning, check out my complete course. You'll learn how to use every tool in Luminar Neo one by one. Each lesson builds on the previous. So your skills grow as you advance in the course. You also get all the raw files demonstrated in the lessons so you can follow along, as well as several other bonuses. There's a link to the course in the description area below. Check it out. You may have noticed that I'm now in Lightroom. The next two issues arise when using Luminar Neo as a plugin. The first one is Often people say that their image didn't re-import back to Lightroom after editing it in Luminar as a plugin. So I've done some basic edits to this image in Lightroom. Now I want to add a texture overlay and do some things with Luminar. So I'm going to show you where this image lives. It's in this set or folder. So I'm going to open it in Luminar directly. So edit in Luminar. Then I'm just going to quickly apply a couple things and I'll show you what happens when we finish it up. Here's my finished image. I added a couple of texture and grunge overlays and added mystical to the image. Now watch what happens when I click apply. The image should be saved back into Lightroom and there it is. Notice however that it is not next to the original image. I see this confuse people a lot. You're expecting the image to show up here next to the original and when it doesn't and you don't see it, perhaps Luminar didn't pop to it like mine did, the issue is probably the way that you're sorting the folder of images currently. So make sure that your toolbar is showing at the bottom and sort by file name instead of by edit or something else. Now you can see there's the Lightroom edit and the Luminar edit. So if you're missing your newly edited image that's come from Luminar Neo as a plugin, sort your images by file name and see if it shows up. What I would suggest is this, go to Luminar and uninstall the plugin for Lightroom like this. You'll notice the warning said restart Lightroom. So in order for it to take effect, I need to shut down Lightroom, come back here, install it again, and restart Lightroom as indicated. I'm not going to do that because mine was working fine. 
just remember, uninstall, close Lightroom, reinstall, relaunch Lightroom, and you should be good to go. If that still doesn't work, you may have something more complicated going on that's beyond the scope of this video. And I would suggest that you get in touch with Skylum support. And finally, issue number five, once again, involves Luminar as a plugin. I'm gonna take this snowy panorama that I've already merged using Lightroom into Luminar to apply some edits. Let me show you where the issue arises. Here I am in the edit panel, and I want to be able to double check that I'm not overdoing it and clipping the highlights, but you'll notice the histogram is not showing. If you are on Windows, you can just go to the view menu and show histogram, and there it is but Windows users report that they don't have such a menu, that by clicking the logo, which usually works for Windows users, doesn't apply here. In your case, what you need to do is right click on the image and choose show histogram. It's that simple. So if the histogram is missing for Mac, use view and then histogram, Windows right click. Well, are your problems solved? I hope so. If you got value out of this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with friends. If you'd like to watch another Luminar Neo tutorial here on YouTube, click one on the screen now. Until next time, take care and I'll see you soon.